Hi. Let's talk about the scientific method. I'm going to present an analogy to hopefully help you understand the scientific method and the terminology related to it a little bit better. The scientific method is like a puzzle. It solves a complex problem by testing one piece at a time. The steps in the scientific method are to make an observation. I observe I have lots of pieces that should come together to make a picture. Leads to a question. Where does this specific piece fit in that picture? I state a hypothesis, our proposed answer to the question. If I put this piece here, then the picture will be more complete. I design and conduct an experiment to test the hypothesis. If I've written a good hypothesis, it should tell me exactly what I need to do and what I'll find out. If I put the piece here, then the picture will be more complete. It answers my question. Based on the experiment and the results I get, I can draw conclusions. Either yes, the test, the experiment supported my hypothesis, and when I put that piece in that position, I got a better picture. I got a more complete picture. Or, if it didn't, it, my hypothesis was not supported, I get a new observation. Well, maybe if I put the piece here in this other place. The whole process is iterative. I can either develop new questions and hypotheses if my original one is demonstrated to be wrong, or I can move on to another test. Pick another piece and test that if my hypothesis is supported. The components of an experiment, we start with an independent variable. This is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in knowing where this piece goes. If I change this, how will the outcome change? The dependent variable is what happens. If I change the independent variable, what's the outcome? The outcome depends on what I did with the independent variable. There's only one of each of these one independent variable so that I can isolate and be certain that when I change that, the change in the independent variable is responsible for any change in the outcome that I see. To ensure this, all other variables, any other factor that could change the outcome, has to be controlled or held constant. Controlled variables, note that's plural, there are many of them, anything else that could change the outcome. So I'm only going to test one piece of the puzzle at a time, all from the same puzzle. Everything else remains the same. Where do I start? Let's run through the whole process. I start with all these pieces that are just a mess. If I don't have the box top to show me what's going to happen, I just have to walk away and forget it, right? Wrong. We all have some information, we all have previous knowledge, and we all have access to libraries. We start with our best educated guess. It's educated because it's informed by what you read in the text, what you found online, what you saw in the library, what you've learned in the past. In this case, we've all learned that the border, the edge, has straight sides. So we're going to find the pieces with straight sides because we can put them in the border. And even more, we know if there are two straight sides, we have the corners. I don't know everything. I don't know which corner these pieces are. But it's a place to start where I know where they belong. From here, I can start testing other pieces or other variables. So my question is, where does the piece fit? My hypothesis, if I put this piece here, then the picture will be more complete. The experiment, place the piece to determine if it fits. And my conclusion, if it fits, is that I have a better idea of what the picture is. It's not yet complete, but I'm getting an idea. And after each round, I can go and test a new independent variable, another puzzle piece. And every time that my hypothesis is supported, I get a better, clearer picture. If my hypothesis is wrong, just come up with a new one and try that piece somewhere else. Eventually, as I continue to test new independent variables, 
I can get a whole predictive picture, predictive um, statement about what the picture is. The big picture, not just one independent piece, you can determine one independent piece fits somewhere without knowing the big picture, but we're studying real world phenomenon. So I know there's a bigger picture to it. How does it relate to everything else? Uh, in this case, all my pieces relate to this bigger picture that has castles and dragons and knights. So I have a picture of medieval knights defending their castles from dragons. I can have a pretty good idea and be pretty accurate while still having the same pieces. The pieces that I have in place have predictive power. Based on the pieces I have here, I can predict that there are dragons in those open spaces. Ha! And I'm correct. I might not always be correct, but based on the evidence around it, the supported, tested hypotheses, the pieces that are in place, I have predictive power even when my puzzle is not complete. So what's a scientific theory? It's a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world. It's been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment, even when there are still holes in the puzzle. They are not guesses, but reliable accounts of the real world that can predict what goes on in the places where we don't actually have complete data. It's a predictive model, and it's developed from all the related, rigorously tested hypotheses about a natural phenomenon. A phenomenon is an event or occurrence or thing that exists. It's not something supernatural. Uh, theories don't have to be complete to be accurate, as we just saw. I had those two holes in the puzzles, and I could still predict what went there. Even if I lost those puzzle pieces, I could be pretty confident of what filled in those holes. So when you hear, it's just a theory, that either means that it's strongly supported, evidence-based statements, or the speaker doesn't know the meaning of the word. So here's another example. Based on this image, I can predict what's going on here. I have a hole. I don't know everything. I can predict some hillside. Oh, a wing. I would predict this is a dragon. Because it has predictive power, I have some confidence, but I'm not always correct. I'm going to continue to try to test that, and in this case, my hypothesis was incorrect. It's a car, not a dragon. Uh, do I throw out the whole puzzle because one hypothesis was incorrect? Is my entire theory wrong? No. Now I can modify and improve my theory. The strength of the scientific method is that I always support, refine, even if I have to revise and change some parts because my hypothesis was incorrect, I'm always getting a better picture. One thing I haven't talked about is controls. What are controls? They're a group of test subjects that we compare our results with to help us interpret them. In the case of a puzzle, it could be the box top picture. I compare my end results with the box top. Is it similar? Yes. Well, then I have the right picture. Uh, we don't always have positive control because we don't always know the end results. An example where we would have a control uh, that's not a positive control. Uh, medical testing, drug testing. We have a group that gets a placebo. They're the control group. We don't know what the outcome is, but we're going to compare the group that did get the drug with the group that got the placebo. The difference between the two gives us our outcome. It lets us know that the results are due to the independent variable and not that they would have just happened anyway because the placebo group did or did not have that change. So the group we compare with to help us interpret our results is our control group. We'll go through and practice this process again and again throughout the term, so I hope that helps. There's my control group. That helps you to understand the scientific method.